Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and today we are going to talk about diversifying your e-commerce income. So I know if you if you sell on Amazon already, I have to congratulate you. You literally started at the highest e-commerce mountain that you can climb. That is my opinion. I've tried all of the platforms, most of them, I guess I should say not all of them. There's so many different platforms there, but Amazon is like the top of the food chain. It is. If you have started on Amazon already and you're selling on Amazon, you're awesome. You are already slayed the biggest beast that's out there. So if you have an established foundation already on Amazon, it's time to start thinking about diversifying. And in this episode, we are going to talk to you about the different things. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the benefits and selling about multiple platforms and multiple items. Even if you're just selling a wholesale bundle and that's on Amazon already, there's ways to diversify. There's lots of stories I have from clients who have sold multiple things in multiple places, even on places like Walmart, Etsy, eBay, like all of the things. And that brings me to how I'm diversifying. And of course, I am always practicing what I I preach, not just telling you guys what to do, but I actually test it and put it in progress and put it in process to see what's good, what's bad, what's different about all these different platforms and how you can benefit from selling in multiple places. So number one, I have an exclusive invitation for you to come and join me live because I'm doing something new. I am going to start selling on a platform called Whatnot. I'm not sure if you heard of Whatnot, but it is live stream auction style selling and i am an avid jewelry buy sell trade collector and i want to sell some of my jewelry collection in just a more new interesting you know i have a lot of listings on ebay and sell it in different lots and forums and things like that but um, i want to try whatnot because i just find it fun and interesting and different and i want you guys to join me because the whole fun of live auction selling is to actually have a live audience and so if you go to mommyincome.com forward slash whatnot you can sign up for a buyer account it's free you don't have to do anything that will give you actually a credit to make your first purchase if you sign up for that link that is an affiliate link full disclosure um it's because we all get benefits when there's affiliate link right if you sign up for my link then you get i think a free ten dollar credit and i get a free ten dollar credit and all as well so i would love to see you but mainly sign up for the account so that you can come hang out with me and see some of the stuff i'm selling and i'm going to tell you this right now Everything that I'm going to be offering for sale, it's not just jewelry, by the way, I'm going to be, sell I love selling toys. I have toys. I have old GI Joes. I have uh, some, a lot of smalls. I really like smalls. Um, why? Because I don't take up a lot of space. I love the treasure hunt. I go to eBay and estate sales and all this kind of stuff. And I'm going to start incorporating all of my knowledge, not just my wholesale bundle, Amazon FBA experience, but I have a lot. Did you guys know that I have a lot of experience in e-commerce in general? in eBay, Facebook Marketplace. I'm going to be trying whatnot. I've dipped my hands into Etsy and Poshmark and all these other platforms. I try to at least evaluate to see what is the best for what type of inventory and where. I mean, chances are, if you are a reseller of some sort, you resell multiple places. And I suggest that because that's today's episode and what that's all about. But I wanted to just invite you. I am going live for the first time. So I'm nervous, going to be honest. Um, I mean, I go live here all the time, but so going live on a new platform and figuring out all the technology technology and all that kind of stuff. So I would love your guys' support. February 14th, Valentine's Day. Why? Because I love. <laughs> and I just thought that would be a fun day to start. So this week, February 14th, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Mommy Income is going live on Whatnot, and I'm going to be doing some live selling. So I'm super excited. I've got some things in the queue. I'm going to do some jewelry items, some miscellaneous items. And hey, if you guys have requests and I have it in my stash, in my closet, I would love to pull some things out and just do that. But going to be selling some things that have resale value, meaning if you have an Etsy store, if you have a Poshmark store, if you have an eBay store, if you have Marketplace, something like that, you can probably resell a lot of the stuff I'm going to be selling on another platform. And that's something that we're talking about today is diversifying. Why? Because if you are in an inventory based business, no matter what platform you sell on, no matter what marketplace you sell on, whether that's Amazon, Walmart, eBay, Etsy, Poshmark, Depop, Facebook Marketplace, OfferUp, like wherever you're selling, whatnot, everyone has 
access inventory of some sort. You'll have a bundle, it's something that's kind of half broken, but half or the package is damaged, but the product is good. A liquidation, something that's like, oh, I don't think I'm going to carry this again. I had two or three left over a season. Maybe it's an overstock, maybe it's a bundle that uh, one component got discontinued and you discontinued it. You, there's always going to be excess inventory. Walk into any retail brick and mortar store, any place that sells inventory, has inventory, has product. They all have some sort of way of getting rid of their clearance there. They have a clearance section. They have liquidation. They do pallet drops like or shelf pulls. Target sells all of their shelf pulls to uh, the Goodwill. And so the Goodwill gets them and then resells them for a little bit of a markup. And that's how they might be buying in major bulk in order to resell there. Maybe it's a donation type thing. I don't know exactly how that works, but those are called shelf pulls where things are great, but they just don't sell well for whatever reason, or it's seasonal, things like that. So please, number one, come join me, mommyincome.com forward slash whatnot. And then talking about diversifying. So if you are Let's talk about diversifying income for just a minute. So I don't know if you've ever heard this, and this is proven. I just I actually saw this statistic on, I believe, Forbes or Inc. for Business or something like that. I can't remember the reference. Forgive me. Um, it's not my stat. I didn't make this up. I'm just like, I Googled it. And it's like, the ad, and I'm sure you've heard this over year, the years. This has been studied by Harvard and other places. Multiple income streams make millionaires. So the average millionaire has seven different income streams, meaning seven different ways that income comes into their life. Um, having multiple sources can significantly increase and enhance your financial stability and your wealth building potential. So um, some of these income streams, most of them are earned income. That's your job. That's the job that you have. That's in, And if you don't have a job, you have a business, that's a profit income. That's a revenue income, whether you're paying yourself a salary, your earned income one way or the other. And then there's things like rental income and royalties and profit and capital gains and different income streams that people have a lot they say a lot of people that are millionaires they have they own real estate they rent they have rental income they have royalties from something they've created royalties meaning you wrote a book you wrote a song you have a piece of artwork that continually even if it's small amounts continually pays you so if you create a hit song you hear about those one hit wonder type people and they have a big smash hit they get royalties forever for those songs so even if they're played now 30 years later um you guys can think of any one hit wonders <laughs> those people are still being paid because they get royalties for something a piece of work that they've created that's royalty or licensing or something like that so your average millionaire has a multiple income streams earned income profit dividends capital gains retail re real estate or business income of some sort revenue and so diversifying your income is a strategy to help mitigate your risk right if you're putting all of your eggs into one basket and something happens with that basket you're in trouble we've all heard this concept before but in e-commerce this is really important as well because not every customer is on every platform and there's billions of customers on the planet right so Amazon is definitely one of the biggest and most sought after, but for different reasons. People who are shopping on Amazon are shopping differently on eBay, are shopping differently on Etsy. They're looking for different things. That doesn't mean they can't find and stumble upon what you're selling. So if you're only selling in one place, Amazon, even if it's the biggest place, the most exposure to the most amount of customers, if you're just selling to them, that's great. But there are people that aren't on Amazon. And if you simply copy and paste your listing to a platform like eBay or Etsy, if it applies, Etsy is more of handmade, custom, really cool kind of things like that. They don't want a whole lot of commercialized things on Etsy. So you have to follow the rules of all the different platforms. But if you're only selling on Amazon, you are actually missing out on a ton of customers, all kinds of different places. And so this also applies to e-commerce. I'm not sure that you need seven streams or seven platforms to sell on in order to make decent money with all this, but I believe you certainly need more than one. Number one is because you need to have a plan for your access inventory. If you're carrying inventory and you're an inventory-based store, or business, I guess I should say, you're not service-based, you're offering goods, not services, you're going to have access, access packaging, you know, maybe you get the wrong shipment and the vendor doesn't want you to send it back, whatever, you're always going to end up with a pile of stuff that you're going to need to get rid of. And so 
it's really important to have a plan for what you're going to do with that inventory and why you need to diversify. So the very first reason you need to diversify is not just because you want more income, but it's also because you need a place to sell different style or different types of items that come into your path. So for my students, most of you guys are wholesale bundlers or you're learning to become wholesale bundlers. And if not, why not? You've never heard of wholesale bundling. I want you to go to mommyincome.com forward slash free training and get your free training on bundling because that's how I made my first and subsequent million dollars on Amazon and e-commerce. But I didn't start there and I certainly don't just stay there. I sell in multiple places. So if you haven't heard of us, that's fine. But in other places, you're going to have opportunity to buy product, to get good deals, to increase your revenue in different ways. And if you're only selling on Amazon, you're going to have to turn down inventory opportunities to make purchases and make profit because you simply can't sell that item on Amazon. Now, some people are always about let's stay laser focused and I only do Amazon FBA and I'm not going to be a jack of all trades. I'm going to do the one thing and do the one thing really well. There is wisdom in that. And I honor that. And I think that's great. But there's a point where you reach mastery. You reach it to where you're like, okay, I've really got a handle on Amazon. <laughs> yeah, that can take a while because Amazon can be a complicated beast sometimes. But if you are staying focused to say, okay, I'm well established. I've got this bundle. It's selling good. Or I have my brand or I have my products or I have my process that's earning me significant money or decent money on one platform. Now it's time to add another. Now we don't add another until we are comfortable and stable in our main platform. So this is not, this episode is not gonna be for everyone. Maybe you need to file it away in your brain for, okay, this is goals for next year, next quarter, next month, next something. So this might not apply to you, but it applies to everyone eventually. So please just listen up and think about that. You might have to turn down some profit if you're not diversified, like from Amazon versus eBay. Right? So I am an estate sale guru, a <laughs> guru, I hate that word. I love estate sales. I love treasure hunting. I love going to yard sales and things like that. I love to find stuff to flip. It's just part of my being. I cannot help myself. If there's a sale, I'm like, oh, pull over. Let me see what they got. And the reason is because I have multiple ways to sell multiple products. So I never have to leave profit on the table if I don't want to. Now everybody has a budget. I can't sell everything all the time, everywhere. But an example would be going to an estate sale and there's places where you can sell for top dollar your Amazon inventory. So Amazon, anything with the barcode, if it's brand new with the barcode, I'm scanning it with my Amazon app to see if there is a profit to be made there. Because Amazon, generally speaking, for me and my experience, has been a faster moving, higher profitable items higher profit items on Amazon. People pay a little bit more there. They have more of a catalog necessarily. I don't know, that's debatable. But they have more access to more customers. They have Amazon Prime, people like that. So I've noticed the fastest sell through on any inventory I buy is on Amazon. That's my personal experience. But I also have thrifting experience and understand that even though it does, if it has a barcode and I can scan it, it doesn't always fit for Amazon or it, maybe it's restricted or a restricted brand. So then I say, okay, what is this selling for on eBay? And I can scan the barcode just the same with my eBay app or use my phone using Google Lens or even the eBay app has a great, the Amazon and eBay app both have good image search options. So if you don't even know what it is, you don't have to type stuff in. You can literally take a picture of it and then it analyzes what it is and tells you what the recent solds are and you can find out where your best profit margin is going to be for that item. So even eBay on used items, things that are missing parts and pieces for things. What's one of my favorite things to sell on eBay? The things that everyone else overlooks that's in a dirty, dingy box somewhere under a table and everyone thinks has barely any value. Those are the things I end up scooping up and selling online because you can get so much treasure from that and you'd be surprised what sells. So not everything sells well on every platform, nor is it allowed. This is one of the reasons why we diversify. So I have my Amazon as my bread and butter main e-commerce income stream number one, Amazon FBA. 
Number two is going to absolutely be eBay. eBay is a great place to liquidate certain things. It's a great place to sell items that are used or obscure or hard to find or not new in the box. I like to save all of those types of things for Amazon. Now, there's definitely some crossover. You can sell used items on Amazon, certain things. Um, there's video games, books, board games, used electronics. You absolutely can. But I say proceed with caution because Amazon is nine out of 10 times going to side with a customer no matter what happens, even if you're in the right and can prove it, they oftentimes side with them. So those things are a little bit harder to deal with in my opinion. Uh, if you're selling used items on Amazon and then the customer just gets their money back all of a sudden, they eBay has more stringent rules about describing and being able to not accept refund, refunds or returns and it gives you a little bit more leeway when it comes to arguing with a customer who's not satisfied. So there's problems everywhere. Of course, we're not going to get into that, but there is kind of a time and a place and a certain types of inventory you sell is here versus here. And if you are diversified in all different platforms and have different, it depends on your business model. But so Amazon FBA, number one, bread and butter, top dog e-commerce site. Then I have eBay. That's where I sell all of my other hidden treasures from garage sales, estate sales, thrifting, uh, things that are open box. These are used, rare, out of print, out of just hard to find vintage type of items. That can also be used for Etsy. Etsy is also a handmade. Um, people that are hand making or custom making a lot of different things, whether that's art or a lot of people making jewelry and art pieces and the sky is the limit. Embroidery, custom woodwork, so much to sell on Etsy as well. But Etsy also allows vintage. So that's another place. And generally speaking, things take a little bit longer to sell on Etsy, but they also can command a little bit higher prices if you're willing to wait or willing to be patient on that. Or if you're making art, if you're custom making anything, I feel like everyone should be on Etsy because that's just the place to go for the custom orders. So where and how and when you sell things is very different. If you're running inventory-based business, you need to understand that your customers are not everywhere. And people look different, just like you do. You look on different platforms for different things. So if you're li really looking to buy certain things, you might go directly to a manufacturer's website. Maybe you're going to nike.com or you're going to Amazon. A lot of people go to Amazon. But if you're price savvy, you're always going to try to check different prices and maybe you can get it cheaper here. Maybe if you get it slightly used or an open box or open damage box, you might be able to buy it on eBay, something like that. So sticking to one platform, unfortunately, makes you vulnerable to risk and loss. And so understanding that, for example, if your business strategy is simply what I've taught you with wholesale bundle system and with wholesale bundles, you take your wholesale bundle and you, this is a client story actually that I have that she took her, her initial, she was doing some arbitrage, then she launched her first bundle and her own brand and she launched this bundle and it did really well. So then she took that and she said, well, I already have this really well. I have all the assets. I have the, the images, the listing, the pictures. She added it to Etsy and she started selling 25 more units per month by adding that platform. Did it take her extra work? No. Why? Because she can fulfill by Amazon. If you ship all, did you know this, you guys? You should, if you have inventory at Amazon and you create a listing either on eBay or Etsy or any other platform and you sell one, you can simply go to Amazon, do a multi-channel fulfillment and have Amazon pick that item off your shelf and send it to your Etsy customer. I know most of you guys know that you can do that, but if you didn't, you're welcome. You don't have to keep a stockpile at your own house if you don't want to. You can send it all to FBA and then if you sell on multiple platforms, you ask Amazon to pick that off the shelf and send it to your customer. It's amazing. You can be hands off. You absolutely can. Um, and so that's something that you can do. You don't even have to worry about the shipping. There's multiple channel fulfillment. They won't put an they won't even put it in an Amazon box if you don't want them to. So making sure that you're doing that. But depending on the condition of the items, picking the pl proper platform is to resell your excess inventory or things like that is really going to be important. So this is kind of what I'm thinking about when it comes to like dead inventory, just like bundles that didn't do as well or wholesale items that kind of fizzled out or had too much competition or discontinued or say you got an IP claim and they're like, pull all your inventory and good luck with that. Well, there's still other places to sell that. 
And if you just donate it, that's fine. You get a write-off, but you could actually recuperate your money and maybe even still make profit if you're selling other places. There's just simply too much myth out there that if you don't try to sell it in one place, you're not going to make any money anywhere else. You can at least break even. I have found that I can really break even by having a yard sale sometimes. I mean, to each his own, depending on your lifestyle, where you live, weather, conditions, things like that. So having diversified platforms allows you opportunity for different types of inventory. I'll give you another example that this could be for you or could not be for you, you know, whatever. It's, it doesn't, you don't have to sell it, but here's an example. Um, cannabis is legal in probably, I want to say 30% of states or something like that in the U S and other places, it's absolutely still criminal. It's not federally allowed, but there have been many states that have voted for it to be legal recreational use. And so in those states, those things are allowed to be sold without any problems about things like the I don't want to call it paraphernalia or products or accessories that go with cannabis. Colorado, Michigan, I believe is one. I want to say, I don't know all the other states, New York, Illinois, certain places, whether it's medical or not. But the reality is Amazon doesn't allow it. Now, if you see things on Amazon, it's because people either got grandfathered in, they haven't been caught yet. They're using very specialized keywords that you know, they may be getting in, selling a few and getting out before they get in trouble. Those are options as well. So just because you see it doesn't mean it's allowed or legal. It just means that someone slipped through the craps for a time. But be sure Amazon will find you out and end your listing. So on Amazon, they're absolutely not allowed in that area. But with eBay and whatnot, and even Etsy, I think, you can make customized items and put them in there. It's a matter of keywords. It's a matter of, you can't obviously say, this is for cannabis, weed, smoking, some places you can. Um, but things like rolling trays or small proof bags or things like that people are selling, not allowed on Amazon with those keywords but allowed on other platforms in other ways. So businesses like that, they want to diversify and want to get on Amazon. Sometimes it's not allowed to be sold there, but that doesn't mean there's no money in it. It just means that Amazon is not the channel by which you're going to sell those specific items or things that are like hazmat or pesticides or um, right now the big buzz that people are talking about perfume and how perfume is really hard to, a lot of people stay away from it because of hazmat and because of the shipping rules and how you can't ship it air freight or you can't ship it in a priority and things like that because it's like alcohol based combustible you know flammable whatever um but there's other platforms like mercari for example mercari is a place where they don't really police a whole lot of what's on there and that can be good and bad it's good in a sense that it's really kind of hard to get your money back from there if you show pictures and you receive money and that person receives the item via tracking you get what you get so it's not that it's bad it's maybe a little bit more risky but i've had quite a bit of experience selling on mercari i sell mostly smalls on mercari either name brand kind of clothing items lululemon Athleta, Nike, also high-end makeup stuff. I'm always coming into, for some reason, it just kind of falls in my lap, high-end makeup. Um, I bought them at garage sales. I've seen them at TJ Maxx, Target, and places like that, or even liquidation stuff that kind of comes all together. And obscure colors of lipstick, MAC Cosmetics, or NARS, or you know, Laura Mercier, or Chanel even. And you need places to sell those because you need major approval to sell NARS cosmetics on Amazon. Like you're not going to be approved to sell that, but it still has high demand and you can sell it on eBay without a certificate, without approval. Um, you can sell it on Mercari. You can sell it used on Mercari. Uh, and so there's lots of different platforms to sell different products. So why say no, if you're in an inventory based business and you're like, okay, here's my bread and butter with wholesale bundles, but here's also ways I can diversify to keep money coming in while I'm doing all these things anyway. And I really enjoy reselling. Some people just are widget sellers and they're just like, how can I remotely sell the rest products and create these things just so I can make money? And that's great and all, but to me, it's also fun to buy low and sell high. Like, I don't know, that's just fun to me. And I like doing it in a treasure hunting kind of way. So I have multiple places. Um, so there's certain places, certain things, but you never have to not have a platform there's even liquidation sites i've actually used liquidation.com to liquidate some leftovers after three years we went to our prep center and they're like here's all the miscellaneous leftover stuff that you guys have onesie twosies things that came back that were either the vendor sent too many and they didn't want them back so many reasons why you have access inventory and so we literally lotted it all up onto boxes and in a pallet we created this manifest of all the things that were in there and we liquidated it it started it at a hundred 
hundred dollars. It was like a hundred dollar auction or something on liquidation.com. We ended up selling it for $412. They paid for the freight, which wasn't too much. And the inventory was out of our hair. We had some recovery costs and we put that into new and better inventory. So I know people are nervous about these processes, but diversifying, having ways to kind of create the journey for your inventory. I mean, obviously the top of it is creating a bundle, selling it on Amazon, selling it all out and re reordering, reselling. But for some reason, something's discontinued or it's not selling as well as you want. And you're thinking, okay, once that sells out, probably not going to replenish it. I might have some excess inventory either at my home or my prep center, gathering all of that and just it's all still brand new in the box. So you can liquidate multiple things. There's dollar stores and small brick and mortars that are looking for inventory all the time and they're looking for it for cheap. And so if you're look, looking to liquidate, that's a great opportunity. There's also, like what I said earlier in this show, I've seen this, I've been watching a lot of whatnot auctions and realize that there's people that go out thrifting every single week. They have all, they have a store, they have maybe they have an actual thrift store in whatever city that they live in. And every Friday or whatever, they do a live auction and they go through their own store, their own brick and mortar thrift store or antique mall or whatever it is. And they start literally selling things live auction style from their own store. So sometimes it's a way for fast money. If you need something to be like, oh my gosh, I need to liquidate. I need to make some cash fast. If you're selling on a place like whatnot, that's like live selling platform and you have an audience that you have to build that up, obviously, then not everybody knows they're selling certain things like toys or clothes or electronics or video games or whatever. Um, you have to kind of build up people watching you or whatever, but you just send, put that on your social media. You can even add that to a business card or anything like that that you're sending out, maybe on your logo and do live, live selling. Obviously you have to have people there live. So there's some planning and stuff to do with that, but there's something for everyone. That's what I'm trying to say. And with all of these different platforms, how consistent are you selling and how consistent are you diversifying? Do you have, let's talk about Shopify. Are you having, are you having your own website? Um, is it required? No, you don't have to have any, none of this is required. First of all, I'm just trying to tell you how to diversify your income by repeating the things that you're already doing. So let's just take this scenario real quick because we're wrapping up here. I don't want to take too much of your time. I'm interested in you guys diversifying. I want to hear from you and let me know all the different platforms that you're selling on. And if you want and need training and tips on some of these, I can bring in some experts. I can talk to some experts. I can I'll give you my expertise as far as that goes on whatever platforms I've been on. I'm doing some more extensive eBay stuff because I've been on eBay longer than I've been on Amazon. And although Amazon has brought me the most success in the highest profits and the fastest and highest profits. That's why I talk about that the most, but eBay is a close second for me. And it takes different style of work to do that, but it doesn't have to be that difficult, especially if you're doing wholesale bundles. So if you take your wholesale bundle and you say, okay, I've got this just like my other client, I've got this successful bundle. It's selling well on Amazon. Where else can I distribute this? Y'all, did you know that you don't have to have a million SKUs or a big brand to take that item straight to Walmart? All you need to do is buy a UPS or a UPC code from GS1. So if you have, let's say Kristen's favorite things bundle and it's in this bundle and I'm going to say, okay, I'm doing really well on Amazon. All I'm going to do is copy and paste this listing over on Walmart and over on eBay. And I'm going to put it on Etsy and I'm going to see if brick and mortar stores want to carry it. I'm going to put it on Facebook marketplace. I'm going to go everywhere with my one product. You don't have to have a slew and some big store and some big brand to do this. You can take your one successful bundle and deposit it in every single platform that you have and streamline all of those things. And you don't have to show, oh no, I got an order from here, an order from here, now I have to individually ship all that. Multi-channel fulfillment on Amazon. Even your own website, you can fulfill orders from your FBA store. If you're sending things to FBA, send them all to FBA. And then when you get an order, you send an email and the order sent out. So working smarter, and taking what you've already done and just duplicating it on different platforms. Yes, different platforms will take time and energy to learn, but you're not talking about slaying the big beast like you did with Amazon. You can literally start an eBay store, list your first few items, and be up and running in way less time than it takes to verify with Amazon and do all those different things. It is so many. You can literally create a Facebook marketplace listing in three minutes. I taught my mom how to do it the other day. Wow, that's really that easy? I'm like, yeah, ma. 
And Mercari, same thing. They limit you. That's not Amazon where you have all these attributes and your five page listings. When you sell something on Mercari, it's a simple picture. It's a, you get, I think, 60 characters in a title and that's it. And you have very small amount. You get to pick three tags. You get to put what it is and it's very cut and dry. There's not a lot of words. There's not a lot of anything. It's kind of, you get what you get. Pictures are worth a thousand words. Here's it. Here it is pretty cut and dry. And those things have been very successful. And when I first started on Mercari, I, there's a Victoria's Secret um, outlet by me. And back then, which was many years ago, when I first started on Mercari, the prices were insane. Like they just had so much stuff. I mean, you could get underwear and things like that for 99 cents. Now it's more like four or $5 and things have gone up quite a bit. And resale is kind of tanking when it comes to that brand. But the reality is so it was access. I had an outlet right by me. There was only five outlets in the whole country. So all of their health and beauty products and their sprays and their lotions and their all the things they sell were on, it's out in an outlet. So it was really cheap and they'd have prices three for $10, different stuff. And so it was a really good lucrative place, but you can't sell that on Amazon. So I had to go and uh, sell it on eBay and create the listings and do all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's a different type of work, but also the profit margin was unavailable to me on Amazon. So if I only sold on Amazon, I would not have been able to take advantage of the thousands of dollars in profit sitting right in my backyard because I didn't have another platform to sell that type of inventory. And this just shows you over time, not just the average millionaire has seven income streams, but your business can have multiple income streams multiple income streams from wherever else. I know that I know several people even in business now they do things like they have multiple platforms and like all the ones we mentioned already, but then they also have affiliate links. If you're, if you're willing to sell something for someone else, or if you're saying, oh, affiliate links means just here's a product I love. And when I tell someone else about it, I get a, I get some money back. That's really what affiliate links should be. Is it, this is something I love, that I trust, that I like, that I've used, and I want to introduce it to you. And hey, we both benefit. You're going to get the benefits of this new platform or maybe even a store credit. Like when I tell you guys about Sticker Mule, oh, the Sticker Mule that makes your custom packaging, which by the way, is brand building. So this is my wonderful poly bag from Sticker Mule mommyincome.com forward slash sticker mule. You guys try mommyincome.com forward slash any word. You're probably going to find a website that we're linked to. <laughs> I'm always like every word like mommyincome.com forward slash whatnot. That's where you're going to join me this week, right? 2 p.m. Eastern on Valentine's Day. Hope you're there. Um, I know, shameless plug. Um, but this also helps. So my one client with the Beat the Boredom Box, she her, she created that whole brand and line of senior citizen gifts and that sort of thing. And she created her whole product line around that. So then if you already have your custom packaging, you can add your custom packaging, your brand, your logo to all these other things. And pretty soon you're everywhere with that one brand. So even sticker meal, things like that. If you love to tell people about stuff, hey, do y'all know that we have an affiliate link program for Wholesale Bundle System? Meaning if you found success with our system and you wanna tell someone else about it and they come and buy it, y'all get some money. We give 30%, 30%. So just consider it. If you have a platform, if you have a business, um, if you're an influencer yourself um, for different reasons or even for the same reasons, and maybe you teach Amazon somewhere um, and you're listening to this, great. Maybe you have a software of your own. Maybe you're listening and you've never heard of us at all, but you have a business that might be interested. We have an affiliate link. Why? Because it's so important. Re word of mouth recommendations of products and services are the number one trusted re business referral on earth. And that's really what a referral or an affiliate link is. So a lot of people with online business have referral links. Did you know that Amazon themselves, you can double dip from Amazon? Y'all, this is just mind blowing if you didn't know. Your listings, you can have an Amazon Associates account or Amazon affiliate or Amazon partner. What do they call it these days? They change their names all the time of all these programs. Anyway, I have an Amazon affiliate an account. Okay. So every time I take an ASIN from there and I put it somewhere on Kristen's favorite things or whatever, I tell you guys about a product, say my brother printer, which I absolutely love my black and white brother printer. If you go to our resources page on the mommy income page, um, all those things are affiliate links. And all it does is link to an Amazon page. If you buy that printer from Amazon, I get like four cents. But over time, 
that stuff adds up. What if you're making $100 a month just by people buying stuff that you recommended? You don't have to have the inventory. You don't have to own it. You just say, hey, I love this printer. Here's the link. And if you send them the affiliate link for it, it links right to the Amazon page. They don't even know. And you're getting a kickback. Now we'll tell you, it's pennies on the dollar when it comes to Amazon, but it adds up over time. So if I tell you about my printer and I tell you about my wonderful curly hair product and I tell you about my cousin, my client's bundles and say, go buy one of these, this is awesome. Everybody gets a piece of the pie and you can do that with your own stuff. So I could send you an affiliate link to my own bundle. So not only am I giving an affiliate kickback for recommending a product to you, but I'm also getting the profit from my product. Amazon offers this to everyone. So you can have an affiliate account. And then if anybody wants to buy it, you can put your affiliate account on your Shopify store. And now you're getting your profit and double dipping. It's not a ton of double dip, but who, you know, so only double dip anyone likes. Don't double dip into my ranch or my salsa, but for sure, double dip on Amazon, giving us some kickback. So this is just bringing to mind different ways that you can diversify. And I think I'm going to do another follow-up episode on this, on what to sell on what platforms based on my own personal experience. And this platform is great for these types of items. This platform is great for these types of items. So who, what, when, where, why of selling where? Because I think that is super important for you guys to kick into that. There's so many different ways too. You've got antiques and thrifted items and obscure items. Of course, that's like eBay and Mercari, maybe Poshmark and Depop handmade custom items at Etsy, maybe your own Shopify store. Amazon Handmade also is probably Etsy's biggest competitor, although Etsy really is a kind of a standalone. They really are awesome at what they do. A large, heavy items, local for Facebook Marketplace, offer up, let go, Craigslist. Do people still use Craigslist? Um, Social streaming, like TikTok, whatnot. Instagram Live now has some people selling on it. Even Poshmark has added a live selling component and eBay has a live selling component. Now that's by invitation only to sell in those marketplaces. Plus you have to be, when you're doing live selling, you're talking about live auctioneering. Now it's not gonna be like, <laughs> I'm not an auctioneer, so I don't know that. But the live selling component, it, um, most of the time by invitation only. They want to know that uh, maybe you, that you, well, for whatnot, it was invitation only and they, they, you have to qualify. You have to fill out an application to say, yes, I'm willing to go live and sell live and obey, obey, obey your rules, but also bring an audience with me. And so that's what, that's kind of what live, live selling. Then like low cost recovery items, low cost selling to where maybe you just want to have access in my garage, just want to get rid of it, liquidate it. There's liquidation.com, flea markets, yard sales, uh, things like that. And then of course you can always donate. Donate to the Goodwill or food banks or nonprofits or schools or churches or charities. Um, if you don't want that, all that is a write-off, but I'm all about recovering the cash as much as I can. So that's something that I'm going to do. So this is just your encouragement to diversify your income come try something new now baby steps right? you're not going to conquer and want to you know say okay now i have my amazon store and i'm going to run this like one little thing at a time and go yo if you have questions ask them we'd love to help you and we'd love to provide training if there's a how-to video that you want or need on one of these platforms we will do our best to either find the right person or produce it ourselves so that you can learn more because i want everyone to share the wealth of reselling and living on their own terms and living a lifestyle that they want and earning unending earning potential. But you've got to diversify. You've got to do what the smart people do. And I'm constantly following after some smart people to see what are these guys doing and how are they doing it well and how are they doing it right? And to me, I also think that enjoying what you do creates the success you have. Anybody can go to work, perform a task, make money, go home, punch out, do whatever, even in your business. Like, oh, this is just what makes money. Why not make money and enjoy it and enjoy your life? I can't wait to get here and talk to you guys. This is the best part of my job. The best part of my business is that I can sit here and give you guys tips and talk to you and encourage you and give you hope and give you tough love and give you resources and give you tips and help your success. I get to do that for a living and I love that. Uh, and that helps and it helps on e-commerce as well. If you're gonna be in e-commerce, you wanna be excited about it. Otherwise, go work at Starbucks, go work at some place that's gonna light your fire. So this lights my fire and that's why I do this every single day. Y'all, I don't take it for granted that you're sitting here listening or watching and whether you're walking your dog or you're literally glued to a screen right now um, <laughs> or listening to it in the background and kind of half-ass listening, I don't care. 
thank you for the privilege of speaking into your life. Let us know how we can serve you and help you. Thank you for listening to the Amazon Files podcast. And don't forget to join me live 2 p.m. Eastern time, Valentine's Day on whatnot, mommyincome.com forward slash whatnot. Sign up, come join me live. I'd love to see you there and help me do something new as well. So I'll see you guys same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.